Hey guys, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to repair a variable speed feeder house drive. On this particular combine, we're gonna tear into the reverser shivs, the lower variable shivs, and we're gonna check the cams on it. And we're gonna tear apart the upper variable shivs. Um, the speed's a little low on this feeder house drive. I think it's around 460, so we're gonna bump the speed up. And we're gonna replace the seal in here that I know, but we also need to get in here and check the uh, inside of the upper variable shivs and see if it's been properly greased or not. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how to basically disassemble the upper and lower variables. Let's check it out. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is take the feeder house position sensor bracket off and then we're going to loosen these three nuts here. This is where I like to use those long double box wrenches because these are pretty tight. These give me plenty of leverage and they're easy to get down in here. I get this from, uh, this one's from Mako, but you can also get them from Gear Wrench. And I actually prefer the Gear Wrench ones better. I think they're made a little better. All right, we're also gonna take these shields off here. So now we got the shields, and that sensor bracket out of the way. We can break these 318s loose back here. Now, if the bolt wants to spin, you can take another wrench from underneath, hold the head of the bolt. Now we're gonna take the tension loose on the upper feeder house drive belt. Some extensions. Side that's fully off, get it out of our way. Right. Now I'm gonna lube the threads here, make that roll easier. You're gonna take a 30 millimeter wrench and you're gonna just break this one loose. Just to worry about this washer's loose, about right there. You don't want to go too far. Then you break that one loose. Then you're gonna run this one all the way and jam it into this one. Now you can see why I looped those threads. Jam them together. Now we can take this and run it into this rod and it's gonna move this whole variable over to the left, taking the tension off of this belt. this belt off. So we've got an 18 millimeter here. Pop it out. A 24 here. Get out. We got 315 here. Take this outer bracket off. Take this washer out, expose our piston, 
which has a three-quarter drive in it. Hopefully the, the big Milwaukee will take it out. Oh, mama. We're going to have to get meter in that. Big snap-on three-quarter ratchet. sure it's not leaking oil. Boots a little sad. I just let it hang. All right. Now we can kind of rock these shivs back and forth in there. Not a whole lot of play there. A lot of grease getting slung out here. Also, I can tell this is the original bearing, so we're probably going to swap that out. Yeah, feels a little rough. So then you just grab this shiv, slide it out. And I also like to feel how tight it fits slipping in and out. It's full of grease. And then we inspect these teeth in here. They look pretty good. So here inside of the inner shiv, you can see our hub, this hub right here, bolts into the back side of it. And then a lot of the times this will get dry in here and then those teeth that I showed you on the outer ship ride right here. And then they'll just rub metal on metal in here and wear these teeth down to where there's nothing left. But you can see this grease seal right here is, is popping out down here. That's why we're getting a lot of this grease slung out around here. All right, now we can take our belt off. All right, now I'm gonna show you a trick. Old Indian trick. Pry here, you notice it's not coming off, it's pretty stiff, it's stuck on an O-ring. So you pry and just smack right on that shaft. Break it loose. That'll slide right off. Now you want to ins inspect this top bracket here because these were really bad about cracking right here and there's a new improved one and this piece is taller and has more weld on it. I don't know if you can see that crack but yeah it's starting to crack right here. So we're going to replace this piece with the updated one so she doesn't do that. You also want to inspect around here for any cracking. Then I like to take a scraper and just kind of scrape all this junk off. All the combine schmoo. This stuff here, when that back bearing goes out, this stuff catches on fire and smolders in here. Now that the upper variable's done, we're gonna take apart this lower shift. We got two 13s to take this plate off. It keeps that nut from turning. Now we've got two stages of bolts that compress this spring. And that's a 10 millimeter Allen. And you want to take a Milwaukee high torque. And start working them out. Evenly.
Shmoo. Now there's three more bolts in here. And I like to break them loose with a short one first. Just get them started. Now, we're gonna switch to a deep one. Here. It just makes it easier to get in there. spring off. Now that the spring pressure is off of this, we can get a better feel for how these cams feel. I've got a custom socket that my dad made that you guys might have seen on my service truck tour, but uh, it's a John Deere high torque reverser socket, the 70 millimeter socket that I had them built to my specifications. Fits on there like a glove. Now we can pull this completely off to get a better look at it. Okay, so you see this wire here? See where that cam was? This is caused from lack of lubrication when running a platform. Because when you plug a platform into this multi-coupler, it doesn't allow you to move this speed in and out because you can't speed, speed up a platform. So what happens is when you grease the reverser and then you don't speed it up and slow it down, you don't get grease where it needs to be. And so this cam just sits here and hammers at the, because we're at the lowest speed when we have a platform on, and then it just wears into this shaft right here. The, we call it the inner shift as well. This is one piece that slides onto this shaft here. But it, this is not too bad. I think we can clean this up quite a bit. But uh, if this gets grooved enough, you know, you can start tearing out your, your seals and you can start leaking grease out onto the belt, which is not good. And then you get enough wear between your cams and this shaft, then this outer shift can bind and then it won't want to move in and out like it's supposed to. So I think we're going to clean this up a little bit and see how it comes out. And over here, you can see it was full of grease, but there was actually some water in here. So some water was able to get inside here. So we're going to pull these cams out and then we're going to clean everything up and put a new cam kit in here with seals and everything and clean up that other shiv and we should be good. All right, so we're going to take a flap wheel and a die grinder and get rid of all this roughness. Now I'm going to take a, a gasket remover bristle pad and smooth it up. Now that made it a lot better. You can still see where some of the spots where it's actually dug into the metal, but we just want to give our seal a smooth surface to ride on. It's a lot better than that rough surface that it had. 
That should definitely be all right. Still got some pitting in here, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Now we're gonna pull the cams out. this all cleaned up. There's a snap ring in here. I we'll need to dig out. Work this up, pull that out. Now I'm going to take this to the parts, parts washer, get that cleaned up. Okay, so now we got the shiv all cleaned up. Now we can put a new seal in. Just kind of get it started with the dead blow. Take a brass grip like that. Put our snap ring in. Flip it around. We're gonna put a little grease in here. Start to push our cam in here. This other seal started. Snap ring in. Okay. We've got two narrow holes here at the top. So we want to line that up. Just like that. We're going to put some Loctite on these bolts. Just some Loctite 242. Okay. Run these back down. Now, you can see that it pushed that cam through that seal perfectly and I didn't have to fight it. So now I'm gonna fill these cavities with grease. So the type of grease you wanna use in your heavy duty variable speed feeder house drive in the upper and the lower shifts is this multi-purpose extreme duty synthetic grease. Part number is TY25744. All right, so you guys remember that I took this nut off here. Now you don't have to technically take that nut off to take the outer shiv off, but you do to get this guy off. And I want to take this outer shiv, this inner shiv off, so I can get a better look at the seal. And also I want to look at the shaft. So I'll take a some gear wrench indexing pry bars. Just get behind it, pry it loose. Slide this guy off. So looking a little further at this, you know, we can see that our splines look good. We just need to kind of clean them up a little bit. We've got a little bit of gunk around our seal, but none of it's wet. It's all dry. So, you know, these are naturally going to seep a little bit and I'm not too concerned about it unless it's super wet around there. Because if we wanted to change this seal, we'd have to clean this all up and then we would have to take these bolts out on this plate and pull this plate off 
to change this seal. But it's not wet. This is all dry buildup. So we're just gonna clean this up, slide the inner ship back on. I'm just gonna take a wire wheel, get in these flies. I like to take little anti-seize, put it on here. So the next time we have to take this apart, she'll slide right off. Now this one came off pretty easy, but sometimes those can be seized on big time. Slide our shit back on. There is a washer in here, but it stayed on the, the shiv. Just to let you know, there is one in there. Now we can slide our lower shivs on. Here's the secret to getting the spring on easily. You see you got two holes right here that are really close to each other. This hole right here is just a through hole and these two are threaded. So this hole, one of the spring bolts needs to go in and then the second hole is where this pin is gonna go into. So you're gonna line those two holes that are closest to each other to this bolt and this pin because they are close to each other. I just start them with my fingers. Now we're going to run that in evenly. Take our 10 millimeter. second set of bolts in. how you rebuild the lower shifts.
and we're gonna go ahead and squirt a little bit more grease in here and we'll be done. Also clean that plate up. Couldn't stand how dirty it was. All right, now we're gonna work on the upper bearable shivs and we're gonna clean all this grease out. Now that we got the grease cleaned out, we can drive this bearing out. bearing out. Now we're gonna clean up this mess. Ta-da! I even pressed a new bearing in it. So now we got the inner shiv here. We're gonna take this seal out. See how easy that popped out of there? And we're gonna flip this around we're gonna unbolt this hub she needs just a little tippy tap tap a -roo. now I'm gonna clean up this mess Okay, now we're going to drive this bearing out. And then we'll clean this up. Okay, I got this cleaned up and I pressed a new bearing in it. This looks like brand new. Give her a slight boofing. Just a splash of anaerobic sealer. You don't gotta go crazy here, fellers. bolts up. I put a little just a slight bit of anaerobic on the bolts. Hammer time. Okay, here's the secret to success. Loctite 620 bearing mount. We're going to put a light film around the outside of this seal and then we're going to drive it in. Now that seal is not going to pop out like it was doing before. Now we're gonna fill it up with grease. All right, you wanna fill it about that full, almost to the top of the hub. And then when we push the outer shiv in there, we'll be able to look through with a bearing here and, and see how much more we need to put in there. But this is a good start right here. So here's the two different support brackets. There's the old one. There's the new one. So these are a lot less to breaking and cracking right in here. Like that one's doing. Now that we got our new bracket on. 
this guy on. Just like that. Slide our belt on around there. Slide the shiv in here. Line our teeth up. Now that we got that slit on there, you can see we need just a little bit more grease in there and we can shoot grease down in here and fill this up the rest of the way. So we got our piston cleaned up and I installed a new boot on there. We're going to start this in. We're going to start the front by hand here. The next thing I like to do is put these shims in here. I use two or three of them. I think you can use up to four. And I put a little grease on them so they stick together. And put it on the piston. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna keep the shivs from being able to retract back far enough. So we'll achieve a faster low end speed and it'll give us more adjustment on our belt. Um, a lot of these S series we have troubles with them getting the speed to anything over 500 I and mean, we'll, we'll end up maxing out our adjustment here but if we add these plastic shims in here it'll allow us to achieve that speed and still have adjustment left on our belt and the part number for these uh, plastic shims is H171448. Okay, so we got the washer in. Now we can put our bracket back on. So you want to tighten this 24 first. Get that seated to the shaft. Then you tighten these. We tighten 18. Now we can put our belt on. So the secret to this is to tighten this belt and go about an inch past the adjustment because we're going to be shoving this guy this way and tightening this belt is also going to help this assembly move back this way. The belt's going to be pulling it and we're going to be working our way back and whenever we get this, this belt set to the correct speed, that should be about right on the money. push down on the belt whenever this gets tight that loosens that back up and we can start moving again we want to get close we'll roll this belt over that should be close so when we're adjusting this belt we want it to be flush or sunk down just a little bit in the shivs. And then you'll also have a eighth inch to three millimeter gap in between your shivs. And that is so we can achieve um, the speed of 500, 520. And then you also want to unjam these nuts and tighten this first before you tighten the nuts back here or else you'll put the outer bracket into a bind 
and you don't want to do that. Put our sensor bracket on. Would you look at that? My adjustment's right on the money. Don't even have to touch it. So now we're gonna put our either fully on. We just want to lift it up just enough. Take the out of the top of this belt. You don't want to jam this way up high. And the reason is, if you raise this up, it's going to change the angle of this belt up here, and then you're going to have less wrap around this lower shiv and have less traction. So we want this as flat as possible. Also, another thing you want to make sure is you get this clamp positioned where this hose isn't rubbing here or here. I've seen it time and time again, this hose not getting put where it needs to be and then it rubs through this bracket and then you lose your feeder out speed and oil goes everywhere all over the belt. So make sure you get these clamps positioned right. All right, so that completes our video for today. I right, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you like this video, if that helped you out, please smash the like button, it helps me out. And uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Keep that green iron moving.